Hello folks, Jared here once again talking to you about Nebraska football coming off of a devastating loss to Colorado. Well, I don't want to say devastating in the fact that it, it, it's devastating to our season. It was just a really tough ending to watch with all the mistakes that were made. And we'll go back over those. But basically, uh, when you look at the game, you have to be excited about the Scott Frost era. I mean, the level of tenacity, the hitting, the, the new players that we saw on the field is coming, folks. You know, uh, Nebraska football is on the return. But going back to the game, I predicted a score. I thought Nebraska would win. I predicted a score of like 42 to 27. And honestly, that's what it should have been. I mean, we got to a point in the in the game, and I, I didn't know that the Akron game being being uh, called off and canceled would be that big of a factor. But boy, was it ever. I mean, you could see at the start of the game, Nebraska had its first game jitters, and Colorado did not. So that really affected the start of the game. If not for that 14 nothing start, Nebraska certainly wins that game. And, uh, you know, we probably win it in easy fashion because of the fact that, you know, when you get that home crowd going and we could could have started off with a big lead, um, you know what happens in Memorial Stadium after that. Usually it's not good for the opponent. So with everything considered, you can't be disappointed about the game. you just disappointed as a fan watching a game. That's all you can be disappointed about. You can't be disappointed about the Scott Frost future because, my goodness, it looks so much better, that result or that product you see out on the field. Now we go into this week to Troy. Um, looking at this game, I'm not too worried about the end result, but I am worried about how they handle the quarterback situation. And uh, when I say worried, not worried that they won't make the right choice. I'm just worried that we need to get Andrew Bunch, you know, ready to play later in the season in case that's needed. As you can see in our offense, the quarterback is going to be running the football. And whenever that's the case, you have a chance of injury. Adrian Martinez, who after you've seen now, I'm sure on many replays, was, you know, injured. Um by Colorado players and maybe not accidentally. Uh, number 44 for Colorado uh, was wrenching his leg very hard on the ground while he was already down. You can see it plain as day. I wish they had one better angle, but there is one really good angle that the university sent on to Big Ten and Pac-10 officials. Hopefully they'll review that. Hopefully the kid has to miss some time because you know, that was, I just don't see what would go through somebody's head on doing something like that unless the coaches got in the player's ear say, hey, you know, we need to do everything we can. This number two is killing us. You know, get him out of there. I hope, for God's sake, that's not what happened. But, you know, you can see plain as day that that, you know, that something went through his head saying, you know, I got to injure this guy. So, uh, however it worked out, uh, it certainly sounds like he's going to be okay. But for this week, you know, we get a game against Troy where, yeah, you want to get Martinez more reps too because we got Michigan starting Big Ten play the very next week. But you want to get Bunch reps because he's our new backup. Uh, he actually looked pretty good when he came in against Colorado, you know, threw the ball pretty good, moved around, didn't seem too nervous. But he needs more time to be ready uh, for the big moments in case they come later. So be interested to see how they handle that. Um, I'm hoping Bunch starts, and hey, if Nebraska does well and, and keeps going, maybe Martinez only needs to play a couple series or maybe not at all. Uh, let him rest and get ready for Michigan. So um, it should be interesting. I'm uh, once again very excited about the Scott Frost era. You know, when it came down to the end of the game and we had the uh, the late hit penalty and we had uh, the missed opportunities with when we got turnovers, you know, we didn't move the ball down close enough. Only seven points in the second half. You know, we just gave them too many opportunities to win. And 
a Scott Frost team is not going to continue to be that way. It was his first game here at Nebraska. He's going to instill that winning attitude where the players learn over time how to win games instead of doing what they do right now, which is basically figuring out how to lose games. Uh, a lot of these players, you know, haven't been familiar with winning a lot on the college level. And uh, so it's just an adjustment period. And uh, I don't think it'll take too long. I think players can see, obviously, from the game the other day that, hey, just a mistake here or there. The drops from Spielman and Stanley, the uh, the 11 penalties we had, the, the early turnovers that caused us to get down, you know, those are things that are going to cost you games. And they're good ways to lose games. And Scott Frost said as much in the post-game press conference. He says, hey, you do this or that. That's just a good way to lose a game. And what, they'll get that figured out. They'll, they'll, get it, uh, they'll get it solved. Very impressed with a few of the players, though. Uh, defensively, my gosh, the guys are flying around. Seven sacks compared to 14 all of last season. Uh, I mean, that just shows you we're back to attacking on the defensive side of the football. And then on offense, you know, I thought Greg Bell looked okay. I thought he missed some wide open holes, but it is his first game at Nebraska, so give him a little break there. Um, certainly Adrian Martinez looks like everything we need him to be at the quarterback position. I mean, he has got the legs. He's pretty accurate with the arm. And he was very poised. I just love how a lot of times he just stood in the pocket, didn't get nervous or antsy, was uh, ready to go, and is very exciting to see. And uh, now that we know his leg's going to be okay, I, I like our chances of having a good Big Ten record this year. So at any rate, we move on to Troy. The one I'm still kind of sitting in my chair getting ready for is that Michigan at Ann Arbor in a couple weeks. I, I, I really think we have a good chance at pulling that one off for some reason. I don't know why in my head. I just have always thought, you know, when we go to Michigan, uh, we could shock the world. So not saying anything yet. We want to see this week. And uh, against Troy, I'm going to predict a score of uh, 37 to 13. And I think the black shirts are going to have a heck of a game this week. And uh, offense will be a little slow going with, with Bunch leading the way, but it'll it'll get moving, and we're going to run the ball a lot. As you can see in the first game, running the ball and stopping the run are going to be two big things. It's, it's, it's what you got to do in the Big Ten to win or anywhere in college football. If you run the ball and you stop the run, you're going to win a lot of games. That's That's all there is to it. So we look forward to Troy. Go Big Red. Beat the Trojans.